All right, so we're basically going over right now what we did as far as cooling on the on Jeremy's car. And he was running into some cooling issues before he got it to us. Uh, his oil temps were hitting 250 in a few laps and then his water temps were getting up to 230. So we shoved our 27 millimeter off the shelf Denso unit. We adopted their, uh, it's their overflow. They're, they'll probably end up moving that, but basically I just bolted it on for getting it back to their shop. Uh, it does run a single 3010-2029 spall fan. And then bolted to the front of that, we have our custom designed oil cooler, which is a PWR unit. And that is uh, specifically built for this car. It has a specific turbulator and we gave uh, CNR some, some data on the car and then we, they basically produced it for us off of our design. Here are CAD images of the oil cooler attached to our radiator in CAD, to specifically NX. We offer the radiator off the shelf and then the oil cooler is able to be purchased custom. This requires us to modify each oil cooler to the specific build and then have it produced in a one-off fashion, which is not exactly inexpensive. However, if that does interest you, feel free to contact us, sales at varus-engineering.com. All right, here you go, the assembled unit. You can see the foam is in between both the oil cooler and the radiator on the sides and the top. So all airflow going through the oil cooler is also gonna go through the radiator. It's not gonna go through the oil cooler and spill out the sides, which is hurting performance. Now on this side, we have a, generally two fans, but Jeremy only wants to run one, which is probably a better idea anyways for his specific setup. Two fans would be better for uh, a daily driver that uses AC, but he doesn't have AC. So realistically, a fan is actually, uh, it actually impedes flow because it's a block, it, it blocks part of the core face. So fans are actually not run on a lot of race cars, which most people don't understand. Or if they are, it's because they are for when the car is stationary. Fans, generally speaking, do not actually improve airflow through a core beyond 25 miles per hour. That's a, that's a rough estimate and, and obviously it depends on each car, but 25 miles per hour, that's a good rule of thumb. We then uh, worked on the ducting of the car. So you can kind of see here, we, we filled in, the white spots are ours. So we filled in that area, which used to be their old oil cooler. We went a little bit lower so that we get the whole um, charge air cooler. We then took out their, their speed holes and we created this pressed aluminum piece which is uh, pressed with the 3D printed dies, which was really cool. Uh, and then we ducted all, all of that, the upper portion with uh, some foam and we ducted everything together as a cooling stack. So the charge air cooler actually connects to the oil cooler and the oil cooler connects to the radiator and all air go through, going through the front of the bumper goes actually through the entire cooling stack minus this little slit up here which only goes through some of the oil cooler and some of the radiator. To finish off the cooling we did, uh, I can't reach, we did 3D print some wickers you can kind of see right here, which should aid this hood in evacuation. Uh, we don't know yet if that's enough, but we will find out. Okay. All right, so the final piece of the cooling system we messed with was we, we ordered this plastic um, sort of NACA duct off the interwebs, and then we installed it to supply some cooling to the transmission oil cooler, which the sequential um, K 
came with, I guess. I don't know. We, we received the car with this on there. We felt that we should add some, something cooling to it since we went flat underbody. So that's basically what we did for the cooling. Dude, that looks so cool from down here.